Chair, Mr. Pierce for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks, Mr. Dante, for being here and for your service. Um, the, I guess as I'm looking at your account and you're reporting that uh, CFPB is uh, solely accountable for protecting consumers of financial products and services, I wonder, and you go into some of the failures, um, homeowners uh, that couldn't understand or couldn't afford homes lost those, and then uh, the ability to repay is, is, is a repeating theme. So I wonder if you, if the CFPB has taken a close look at what led to those homeowners not being able to repay, what, what caused that process that began to push loans out at people. Have you all done that? Uh, sure. We obviously also work with the backdrop of a great deal of work that has come before at other agencies and, and public and private researchers. Uh, and, and thank you for raising because I do think it's important, Congressman, to true back to how it is that we got here in the first place. Uh, we are on the table. Now I'm just asking you not for you to recount it. Have you studied it? Oh, certainly. And indeed, it's relevant with respect so to So do you all have any Fannie authority Mae. over Fannie and uh, Fannie Mae? Our, uh, our authority yes no. extends to consumer financial. Just services. yes or no. Just so you know. So the GSEs are, don't have consumer relationships in general. Uh, but if they do, but uh, yeah, the GSEs actually, according to, I don't know if you've read the book by Gretchen Morganson and Joshua Rosner um, on uh, reckless endangerment, but on page five of that, they explain that Fannie Mae led the way in relaxing loan underwriting standards, a shift that was quickly followed by private lenders. Uh, and then it, later in the paragraph there, it became the playbook for financial executives and in that whole process under James Johnson, he began to, he spent about a hundred million dollars uh, in ten years lobbying Congress to make certain small changes in the rules that would allow him to push those. Um, so you had members of this committee back in 2005 were asked, uh, are, you, are you afraid that the easy lending programs, i.e. that James Johnson was pushing through Fannie, and that this institution was encouraging, are you concerned that these easy lending programs are going to wind up luring people into homes they could not ultimately afford? And so it's not kind of like this came on us in the middle of the night. It was well orchestrated by a guy that began to change the uh, financial compensation standards in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, to one of loan uh, values. And he pushed $100 million toward himself in his nine years as head of, of Fannie and Freddie. And so I wonder, as you're concerned about the health of our consumer, uh, if you're worried about who is protecting us from policy and who's protecting us from these, these uh, people who will buy influence here to redirect. If you don't do that, and if you all haven't asked those hard questions behind the scenes, then uh, then I fear that there's no one actually out here who's really concern, concerned about the consumer. Because this thing didn't begin with the banks. It began with one guy that began to buy influence here on Capitol Hill and with the administration. It began in 1994 with President Clinton buying into the idea that, that somehow, I think it's 94, that... Uh, uh, that he says uh, more Americans should own their own home. That's a theme that continued through both of his uh, terms and through President Bush's term. But it's during those uh, periods that they began to restructure the policies in order to push loans at people who couldn't afford them. And when I hear that you're just sort of blandly going along and not kicking back at the system that encouraged it, it gives me great pause. It gives me a sadness that that this is all just a little bit of a game that we're using the uh, we're, we're use the crisis to come down and we're going to lean on banks all the way up and down Main Street without ever really getting at the problem. The problem originated in these halls, and I think you all know that, but I don't think you got the courage to get out and and uh, push and say loudly but we're only looking at a piece of the problem. You're not letting us get where the real problem is. The real problem was there. It was there in the halls of Congress. It was there on the Financial Services Committee, and it was there with James Johnson and when he was buying influence here. And you're not saying that. I haven't heard it once. 
And it just makes me sad because you're the guys, you're the sheriff in town, and you're looking the other way. I yield back.